Hey everyone, welcome to another Jazz Piano School podcast episode. I'm your host as always, Brendan Lowe, and thank you so much for being here. This is gonna be episode number 164. And in this episode, I'm gonna be talking about three ballad improv textures that I use and love and use every single time I improvise over a ballad. And they're absolutely fantastic. They will completely transform the way you improvise over a ballad and make you sound awesome, okay? So they're really, really cool stuff. With that being said, let's dive right into this episode. So my very first texture that I use in a ballad, and I just played a gig and uh, we played at Casadero Music Camp, which is an amazing music camp in uh, Northern California, but we were playing polka dots and moonbeams. So my very first texture that I use is a texture in ballads where your lines are floating over the top of the chord changes. So we were playing polka dots and moonbeams. Now ballads are moving super slow, right? Turn this volume down a little bit. Now your lines, can you imagine if I was just soloing like this, just eighth notes and chord notes? Very, very boring, right? Right? Very, very boring. So what do we need to do to spice that up? We need to use different rhythms. We need to use, more importantly, different phrasings and flow, okay? Flow of our lines over top. Now, you want to think about <clears throat> the bass player in the rhythm section as the, the support, right? So they're just going along. The drummer's shh, shh. I wish I had a track with me right now, but I don't. Right, You know, just laying down that palette. Now, <clears throat> the very most important thing you can do is keep your ears open. Listen to what they're doing and listen to the support and it will guide you. And you can do whatever you want rhythmically over top of this, right? So you can have long phrases, right? So if they're playing, I could play. Right, I might do that. I might have short phrases. Right? Just little tiny, like, da -da, you know, I can have long, short phrases. I can have a mixture of both. So I could go. And then resolve it, right? Now, I'm completely overemphasizing here just to build the picture, but again, my point is to flow over top of the support <clears throat> with your lines. You don't just have to play in the pocket, in the tempo of time, because actually, in reality, that's going to be very, very boring, right? If I were just... want a, a stream of ideas flowing and washing over top of the harmonies, okay, at, 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 you know, in contrasting, right, contrasting differences. So think about all the different ways you can contrast and then kind of resolve back in into the pocket. And that's going to give playing in the pocket much more power, right? So check this out. Once I wash over and then fall back in, it's like a release. It's like beauty, right? Chord. I got to move this chord real quick. Sorry, it's getting in the way. <laughs> uh, let me see. There we go. Let's try this again. Right? So just a nice short line. So all up until this point, it's been all broken, right? And now... Right? And then finally, 
I, I resolve back into the pocket. And again, it's like a, oh man, it's like a sigh of relief. Again, and this can happen much quicker than I did. You know, you can go move in and out very quickly. Sorry, I probably was thinking about the improv. Played the wrong change there. Uh, so basically, again, flowing in and out of that kind of stuff right there, right? Um, and just having it wash over and then move back and forth. Okay, that's your very first texture, all right? The second texture is to kind of... <clears throat> you can do a lot of different things with uh, moving outside the key and then falling back in. And again, you'll hear this with a lot with a lot of different people in... I don't want to put uh, restraints on this or saying like any guidelines because anything's possible, right? Anything's possible with music. So just have fun, experiment with the different keys, you know, and, and it doesn't have to be, again, it can be loose, you know, don't, don't feel like you have to play a certain thing, right? So maybe if you're soloing F, the, actually, I'll give you one, one guideline first off to start with. You can start with a side step necessarily where you kind of have a, <clears throat> a voicing and then you fall back into the the voicing that you're moving to so um, it can be for any chord so like for the the G minor 7 I might have F here I might go to D minor I might, I, I might play the bass player will play the G but then I'll play right so I'm playing that A flat minor I'm just playing A flat um, mode, or just the Dorian mode, right? Nothing in particular. I'm just playing the scale. I'm just running up the scale, right? And then falling back in into the G minor uh, scale there, right? So we have and it doesn't have to be as complex as that. It can be simple too. And so I'll do it here with a D minor. And then D flat here we can do, right? You know, so just those falling back and forth uh, of, <clears throat> you know, of the motions of any sort of progression can work too. And it can work for the, you can do the, the, the mate, like a G flat major down into the one if you want. So in your, in your one, six, two, five, you can go. And then you play your G flat major here, right? So you, you're playing over the sidestep. And again, like I was saying at the beginning of this, this is going to be number two. It doesn't have to be just a sidestep, but you can work on that to start off with. Then you can start to get into other sorts of keys, like just choose a key. So maybe over your G minor, you can try D major. It's going to be completely out. I understand that. You're going to be like, why does that fit? It does not fit, okay? That is the point. You're playing notes over the key that do not fit, but that is the point. It's The point of this is for them to not fit. And a lot of people out there may be like, Brendan, you can't do that. Well, yes, I can. I can do whatever I want. It's music, <laughs> okay? There's no rhyme or reason to music, unfortunately, in jazz, and that's why I absolutely love it because it unshackles you from all the restraints. So... If I want to play D major over my G minor chord, I'm going to play D major, even though the F sharp is going to uh, clash, but it's a beautiful clash. Like that's why it sounds good. Some of you may out there are probably not used to the sound. And again, if I play, I want to play E major over my D minor chord. I'm going to do that as well. And again, it doesn't have to be as complex. So I went. That's just my E major triad. 
And again, I'm playing a rootless voicing here with the 11 in the middle. But the key to this is that you don't you want to keep it outside the in key for the entire time. I'm having little moments where I'm moving out. And then I fall back into my minor. I'll go on. Here's my resolve right so I'm moving through a whole bunch of different keys and again honestly I'm not really thinking uh, technically what is happening I'm saying okay E major D major maybe I'll try B major and again it's about you want the tension and release you can't have tension all the time like if I were playing outside the key You know, that's just going to sound like complete chaos. But the, the trick about this is to have your outside key influences happening and then moving slowly, kind of morphing back into uh, the key that you're on. And again, have fun with this. Use it as an experimental journey to just let yourself go. Like, it's great to just let yourself go. That's number two. Number three um, is space. Space. <laughs> it's just space. You know, in a ballad, uh, in just piano in general, you might think you're taking a lot of space, but you're not. Like when you start to feel uncomfortable with the amount of space that you're taking, that's a good amount of space. That's great. Like feel the most uncomfortable you possibly can with your space. And that's great. Like it's a nice breathing room. So, right. If I just play that, I could still be playing nothing here. And then maybe nothing. And maybe it, the space, space can act in many different ways, right? I can have space, meaning no space, like I'm not playing at all. But I can also have space in my lines. Like I can sit on notes. Whoops, sorry. Like holding this note, right? Like this is a lot just of space for me just holding on these notes. And again, another thing about the space, it, it also works with motifs. Like the, you think you're doing a motif a lot, but you're not. So you'll do one little idea like that. And then you'll move on to the next idea very, very quickly. Not you, I mean like you, the, the royal you, right? All of us, we do. I do this as well. And so you want to continue your ideas, like leave more space. You want to exaggerate everything, like when you have a motif, use it a lot. Use it for a full chorus, right? Don't just use it for one bar. I might do this, right? And then maybe I'll change the motif. I'll keep the rhythm going, but I'll, I won't have it be as uh, like da 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 da, you know? I'll keep it, I'll make it simpler. Right? And then finally, when it resolves, it's like, oh, you're just like, oh, man, it's like telling a story. Right. And again, the same thing with your space. So you want to exaggerate all your ideas, exaggerate, exaggerate all your space. 
right? And if you're doing one idea, continue it for a long time. Don't abandon your ideas. Don't abandon your space. You know, keep it going to where it's uncomfortable for you and you want to explore that um, that uncomfortability that you're having, right, where you feel awkward. Explore your awkwardness within the music and that's going to lead you to um, amazing, amazing places. So again, so just to cover what we talked about today, these are three amazing textures and honestly, I use these every single time I play ballads. I absolutely love them. It's allowed me to play ballads and love ballads, I could play ballads forever, you know, like I could solo with ballads over ever because I enjoy, excuse me, the awkwardness and the space and just the beauty of all of it, right? So number one, we don't want to just play with eighth notes and chord notes within the pocket. We want our phrases to flow over top. Right? And then you finally just have this resolution. Number two is that kind of mess around with moving outside the keys. You can have the side steps, right? We talked about. The great thing about this, I can't really demonstrate on solo piano, but is the bass player will be playing G, but you're going to have the chord above it with your side step, right? So the bass player will play G, you're playing. And again, you're playing that A flat, right? The other thing I like doing about this too, um, the, the other trick I didn't mention actually, is that you play your chord, but then your scale moves into a different key. So if I start playing G, then I move into a new key. And it doesn't matter what that key is. So if I'm playing G, and I love starting out fast and then slowly tinkering or like uh, losing momentum into a new key. So I might start out in G. And then I resolve into my key, whatever that may be, that note sticking up there, right? So here's my G. And then I resolve, right? So I, I'm playing my G minor and I'm moving into a new key over E and then I resolve into my F. And again, that key can be whatever your choice is. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's completely up to you, but it's such a fantastic sound. It's just so amazing because you're taking the listener and yourself on a journey through other uh, areas and atmospheres and feelings of the music. And again, there's no rhyme or reason. There doesn't have to be a rhyme or reason. You know, it's just an experimental journey. If you don't like it, that's no problem. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's completely up to you. That's why jazz is so great. We can express our own selves through the music. You know, we're not going to express ourselves the same. That's what's awesome about it, right? So be you. Just be you in the music. That's the best thing you can possibly do. All right. I, I want to help you be you, whoever you are, let that come out in the music. I'm giving you tools in ways you can, you can find yourself within the expression of jazz. All right. So try this stuff out, see what you like, see what you don't like all of its, all of its gravy, baby. <laughs> all right. The third thing to wrap things up is going to be the space and exaggeration. I kind of added onto it, but exaggerate everything, right? If you have an idea, Maybe that's my idea. Don't abandon it. Maybe I take it a little simpler, a little slower, right? Maybe I get a little softer. And then I end and I resolve, right? Exaggerate your ideas, exaggerate your space. Remember, if you think you're taking a lot of space, most of the time you're probably not. Again, record yourself. Get uncomfortable with it. If you think that's a lot of time, wait some more. 
hold a note for as long as you possibly can till it dies off, right? See how long you can make your solos with just single notes, maybe, right? Just play the game of being uncomfortable in your solo. See if you can build a solo going up by half steps in octaves. Ah, my note's stuck up there. Woo! Right? Get uncomfortable. Exaggerate. Exaggerate the space. Exaggerate your improv. Exaggerate all the textures you're doing. Again, if you're playing... Right, keep that going. Keep that idea, that texture going for as long as possible. So, <clears throat> I love these three textures. Honestly, practice them, use them, develop a relationship with them, and you will be so much better at improvising over the ballads. I can't even tell you. Thanks for listening. I'll see you in the next podcast episode. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed learning about these three amazing textures and improv strategies that I absolutely love and I use when I'm playing a ballad every single time. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel down below. We release a new podcast every single Wednesday. We release a new Lick of the Week every single Monday. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and we will respond to you. And don't forget to go check out jazzpianoschool.com. We have a lot of amazing free education. We also have a membership if you're looking to take one extra step forward in your jazz piano journey. So that being said, thank you so much for being here. I'll see you in the next podcast episode. And as always, happy practicing.